Everyone, hi, Bruce Muffson from Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another video. As always, want to thank you, the fans, for putting us where we are. The comments continue to pour in, and they're fantastic. Deeper, richer, uh, telling us more about you, what you're looking for us. Subscribers keep on going up, the views keep on going up, and it is my job to continue to feed you guys with original content, and that's what I'm doing today. Okay. You guys know him. You guys love him. His death was a huge blow to everybody. And the more I get to know his music, the more I really see his genius and just how amazing he truly was. Yet at the same time, his clinical issues were just so obvious and people just weren't really kind of picking up on it. The song I'm going to cover today, we've done a lot of Mac Miller recently. It's from, you know, it's That's Life and 88 Keys was actually was released a number of years ago, but only came under a different name, but only came out recently. Uh, this is the picture that was actually drawn. I'm just holding it up. It's interesting because it's a kind of a picture a little kid would write, obviously, and um, kind of draw, you know, how you see the father, the mommy, the little doggy, you know, the son. Kind of like a, a six, seven-year-older would uh, kind of put that together. See how it's kind of put out. It's a pretty typical picture of a little kid. And I truly believe when I wrote my comments, that's what he would have wanted in his head, that kind of idyllic lifestyle. But it seemed like he was just so far away from that. Now, here's the lyrics. I'm going to start off with the first, um, first not the first line, but the first uh, chapter, so to speak. But first one, first verse, it goes like this. All the drugs in your system, again, drug reference right there, you can't sleep. Always smoking weed, causing trouble, never clean the house, okay? Uh, and then it goes down with, I drown my sorrows in that bottle, alcohol usage, and today is full of, full of regret, fine forever and tomorrow, meaning like, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be here, gone, I'm gone, fine forever and tomorrow. And it's interesting, in the first verse, you already have two sections that are talking about drug usage. You have one about uh, being in a bottle, alcohol, alcoholism, drinking, and then you also have one about despair. And he talks about his mother and, don't, you, know, she, you know, they told me, my family. But here's the thing, what's interesting to me, did this looking online, found this out. He had a great family that was truly supportive. And he was very close to his family. His mother was a photographer. Dad was an architect. Very creative family. And they were very supportive of him and his endeavors. Very, very pushing. Learn this, learn this, try this instrument, blah, blah, blah. He was very close to his mother, turns out. Uh, he talked about dating with her. He, he shared everything. And his dad was just an awesome guy. They had a boat. It just was like a... And he had a brother that this brother was like a graphic artist. He did a lot of the album work for Mac Miller. So very supportive family, very close, very strong. So I'm going to go back to that again. So you have a, lot, a first verse of like, um, I, ever since my mom told me she needed me out because I'm always smoking weed, always causing trouble. But in real life, that was never the case. They just wanted him to be happy and to be successful in his endeavors. Now, just a little basketball quote, just because I'm a big basketball fan. He goes, everything is jazz and I'm Stockton. Ha ha. What is that reference to? John Stockton played in the NBA for the Utah Jazz for 19 years. And guess what? Mac Miller was 19 when he released his first album. That's the reference. So Utah and Stockton and jazz, that's where it came from. Okay. Now, he, there's, and this is a chorus. Yeah, I know every, I know it seems a little bit strange sometimes. Yeah, yeah, everybody live, everybody live a little, everybody die. Yeah, yeah. That's life, that's life, what you're going to do. His horn section, his ability to bring in different types of music and different types of instruments is phenomenal. I truly believe had he lived, he could have had a second career easily as a jazz musician doing jazz standards because he was so good with that and how to use music and how to use instruments beautifully like a jazz singer. And he had self-taught, amazing talent. Now, verse 2. And I'm headed to the other side where the grass is always greener. Well, that's to me talking about suicidal thinking. See, my cash got deeper, my morals disappeared. I got more famous, I lost self-control. And then never thought I'd be a blank. This is my last, my last show. Okay, can I please get a standing ovation? 
Thank you, everyone. My last show, I'm going out. I'm disappearing. I'm gone. So to me, he's talking very, very clearly about suicidal thinking. He talks about having women in his room waiting. That's nothing unusual. But then he goes back to again. But me, I'm getting high. And then next line, two lines down, so hard to stay sober. And then two a line after that, always coming um, short. You're like the roach of a blunt. And, I could ne- and finally, I could never sleep at night. I can't pay F paying bills. He brings that word in. I need a brand new lease on life. He is screaming out to me. He is feeling extremely depressed, clearly very unhappy, and boarding on suicidal thinking. And I've said this before about Mac, particularly the first song on his last album. Had I been his treating therapist? Have I been his clinical social worker? If, 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 I never was. I don't want to get into like what it could have, would have, should have. I would have read these lyrics. I would have spoken to him. I would have said to him, you're being admitted. Because something's not right. Something's not right with you, how you're thinking. Something's off here. But look how many times drug usage once, twice, three times, four times. The alcohol use once, twice. And the thoughts and the comments of depression and to me suicidal thinking. You know, new lease on life. You know, my last show, standing ovation. So you, you, you realize, you listen to the words and to the song, you know, it's all about him being so unhappy. And, you know, his mother even made a comment that when he was in high school and he started smoking cigarettes, they were kind of taken aback, the mother and the father, because they were non-smokers. And they were so shocked that he's smoking. Where is he learning to smoke from? The people clearly he's hanging around with. Didn't come from the family. And by the way, statistically... For kids to smoke whose parents don't smoke and no one smokes around them is almost statistically impossible. But you're so guided by what you see around you. And I have a feeling, she said we ate very healthy, we had very healthy lifestyles, we're non-smokers. So for him to start picking up cigarette smoking in high school indicates to me he's with a group of people that cigarette smoking is normal and appealing as a way to fit in, a way to feel like you're part of the group. Again, I would, have, I would have said to him, had he been my patient, I would have had him admitted. And what's amazing to me, and I was sharing this with my, again, producer, agent, Mr. Everything, is that if you look at the song and how it was made, I mean, they got section after section, written by, horn section, drum section, keyboards, bass, all the people that had to go into the studio, the, the camera guy, the light guy, the seating guy, the food guy, the A&R guy, probably 25 to 50 people, and that no one was involved who listened to all of these lyrics and said, hey, we got a problem here. He's talking about drug and alcohol abuse. He's talking about having issues with his family. When I know his family doesn't have any issues with him, he's talking about checking it out. Like, at what point did someone say, like, hey, Mac, Let's slow down. What's going on? What's going on, Mac? Are you okay? What's going through your mind to put this kind of stuff out when so much of his stuff was gearing towards the feeling of inadequacy? And I would have said to him in counseling, I wish someone would have said to him, do you accept that you belong on this stage in front of 20,000 people, that you're revered, irregardless of your color, irregardless of your background, that you belong on this stage, your amazing talent, that you do fit in, that you're as good as everyone else, and most important of all, you can be yourself, Mac, and that's fine. It's so amazing to me that the drug usage and the lean came from an environment where he never was exposed to that stuff. It only could happen to him when he was in the world of rap and music and expectations, but that wasn't where he was coming from. And he didn't need that to be Mac Miller as great as he was. You know, I feel sad in that, in the two levels, in that in so many of the lives, they talk so openly about the drug and alcohol abuse. That so many of the lines talk about this. So many lines talk about this drug and alcohol abuse. And that the dad, he made this great comment. He said, his dad said to him, when he asked him about what he thought about his music, his dad said, as a fan, the music is awesome. And as a father, 
I have to ask, are you okay? Wow. And honestly, I, if I was in that dad's position, I would have said the same exact thing to him. Son, are you okay? And, and that his father had to have such worry and concern over his son. Because as a parent, I know exactly what the dad was feeling. I thought it was so great to read that he was so close to his family. So, so many of the people that I work with from 8 to 88 have nobody. No one to look after. No one cares if they live or die. They could die tonight and no one would care. No, not even know anything. All I see is dysfunction and trauma. And you got a chance to be close to your family that loves you for who you are, for who you want to be. Run to it. Be grateful for that because that's your true support system. And guess what? Your true friends, your true friends, okay, they're going to accept you for who you are, not for you having to act a certain way to quote, quote, fit in, to be cool, to be trendy. Your true friends are with you whatever you turn into because they don't care. That's a true friend, all right? And on a clinical level, for me, it was almost like for all of my success, I don't feel like I belong here. Mac, I'm going to close with this. Rest in peace, as so many people have said. It's a shame you're no longer here. I wish you were still here. I wish you were making great music. And I wish you would have realized just how talented you were as you were. You didn't need anything else. And I believe your music would have been even greater. Everyone watching this, send in your comments, send in your quotes. Again, a lot of quotes about Mac Miller. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me about your own drug and alcohol issues, how it's affected you, and how his music affected you. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. As always, guys, thank you. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. Take care.